Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to All Things Crafty. My name is Melissa and I love to do all things crafty on a budget. In today's video, I have 20 plus Dollar Tree DIYs for you from 2020 and I hope you guys will grab a snack, grab a coffee and join me for this adventure. Let's jump right in. Don't wanna be shy. To start off, we're going to do that flower sign that you guys just saw with the truck. And I really wanted to start there because when I did this, everybody loved it so much. So I just start by taking these love signs from Dollar Tree. You could also use the beware signs or they did have some out for Christmas. So any longer sign that you can find will work just fine. So I take the tags off and then I lay them next to each other with the back facing my table and then I just um, glue them together with some craft sticks now sorry for the angle you guys in this clip I was pregnant so uh, my belly would hit the table so I did have to kind of adjust around the belly but we make it work so once I had it glued together then I just take some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and I cover those holes Next, I take my square dowels, which are always linked down below in my Amazon favorites. I measure out the frame, mark it, and then I take my mini miter saw, which is also linked down below, and I cut them. Once I cut them, then I take my finger sander, and I just sand those edges off really nicely, and then I stain my pieces with my favorite stain, Jacobian. I get my stain from... I believe it's Home Depot. Don't quote me because I always get confused. Home Depot sells one brand and Lowe's sells another, but I'm pretty sure I get it from Home Depot. And I also did want to mention that I always use a paper towel to stain. You can use a rag or a foam brush or a stain brush. It's totally up to you. Once I had my surface painted with my white Waverly chalk paint, then I take this truck that I got from Dollar Tree, and this was with the Easter collection, so I just cut that bottom piece off that said Happy Easter, and I save that piece. I then just fill those holes in with my lightweight spackling once again, and then I go in and I paint my truck and this board with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Once I had the painting all done, then while the paint was still wet, I did go in with a small brush and some white Waverly chalk paint, and I just kind of gave this truck a little bit of dimension right around the edges where the hubcaps would be and where the hood would be and just around all the spots where I felt that it needed a little something. So obviously this part is optional it's totally up to you but i wanted this truck to look as realistic as possible so that is why i decided to do this now i will let the clip play just in case you want to decorate your truck or give it the dimension like i did but i did um also go back in with some ink waverly chalk paint just to tone down that white because i didn't want it to be really bright i just kind of wanted it to be a shadow now these were back in my days when i did not use my chip brush i had not discovered it yet so i did go in with just a regular paint brush like a bigger bristle or wider bristled I should say brush and I did um, give the edges some dry brushing but because we're going to put a frame on this I really wouldn't worry about trying to distress the edges if you want to distress the middle like I'm doing here then that's totally up to you but um, I definitely would skip the part where you do the edges now I wanted our wording to be in a curve and I'm not very good at trying to um, place letters on a curve so I did just take this stencil wheel from Dollar Tree. I had cut it 
in half a while ago so that way when I'm stenciling it's just easier so I just traced that very very lightly around the edge of the wheel and then I took the letter wheel and I did just trace the letters in the wording fresh flower I also printed off the word market, seed stems, and blooms open daily off of the computer, and I traced that on with my Arteza graphite paper. I went over it with my uh, black pink pen, and then I glued our truck down. Next, I just take some floral from Walmart. I love the floral from Walmart, you guys. It's just very full and very high-end looking at a very, very decent price. You can get floral from Dollar Tree, but you're not going to get really full picks and not as nice quality. So I'm all for a bargain, you guys. I'm all for being cheap, but sometimes you got to splurge just those couple extra dollars to get high-end or high-quality looking things for certain things. I think that it really brought the flowers out in this truck, and I'm really, really glad that I used it from Walmart. But like I said, you can use whatever you like. But I did just take some eucalyptus and some flowers from Walmart, and I decorated the back of this truck. And then last but not least, I glued our frame down with some hot glue. I always like to start either on the bottom or the side, and then do the um, next pieces that butt up against it and then last but not least the um, top or side piece however you do it just so that way you know that it fits correctly and then I just glued a sawtooth hanger on look how high end this is you guys I am so in love with it still to this day it's one of my favorites so if you guys are new here, like I said, my name is Melissa. This is all things crafty. I love Dollar Tree DIYs, farmhouse decor, budget decor, and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love it if you would stick around. Just click that subscribe button. I know that most of you watch, but you're not subscribed. So I would love it if you would become part of the family. Once you click that red subscribe button, then you just want to tap the bell and all to be notified when I upload. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow. So moving on to our next project, um, I didn't have two of the same size signs from Dollar Tree. So I did just take this longer USA one and then just a wider and uh, just like a bigger um Christmas or winter sign, whatever you want to call it. So I started by taking the hanger and the stickers off of them. Next, I just trace this longer sign on the bigger sign um, just to get a perfect match. And then I cut the USA sign down on the edge because it was just a little bit longer than the bigger sign. And then I just cut the bigger sign down to size. Now I do that by taking a ruler and a utility knife. I just score it a couple times and then it just snaps right off. Once I did that, then I painted them with my white Waverly chalk paint. I went on my computer, I printed off his and hers, and then I transferred that on, uh, his on one, hers on the other with my Arteza graphite paper. Now, this was back in my days. It's funny to look back at how you evolve and change and the different tools you use. So this was back when I was using Sharpie paint pens. They are really good, I have to admit, but I'm still partial to my Arteza gra or yeah, my Arteza graphite paper and my Arteza paint pens. They're just so creamy and so good that now that I've used them, I'll never go back. But 
once I went over my wording then I just take a sanding sponge and I just sand those words down I wanted this to look old and weathered I was making this for my bedroom makeover I can link that video in the cards um, if you guys want to see that I did do a farmhouse makeover I'm in love with it and um, I was just kind of getting it ready for my girl to come this was um, prior to her coming by a couple months and she was she doesn't have a room so I wanted to get my room ready and nice for her so um, I got it to where I love it so much with my husband and my four-year-old's help <laughs> but anyway once I sanded it down then I take my chip brush and I dry brush all the way around the edges and then literally that easy you guys this was probably one of my easiest projects to do I had two his and her signs that I did end up hanging over our closets so as I always ask you guys in each video wait until the very end and then let me know in the comments down below which project is your favorite so moving right along to our next project I take these half lanterns from Dollar Tree now this was a hot item that I feel like I'm the only one that ever found them at Dollar Tree when I did find them they were only a penny <laughs> so I don't know what the deal with that was but I did just take them out of the package painted them white and then I took a few packs of small stir sticks to make a back to hang these from so I just cut them down to size that I wanted them I laid them side by side and then marked it after I had them cut then I just take my finger sander and I sand those edges down once I have my edges sanded down then I just lay them uh, face down I leave the numbers in the back so that way when we stain them you cannot see them and then I just glue them together with some large popsicle sticks and some hot glue we went to a small bar with neon lights talked about everything that was on our once I glue them down, then I do just take my favorite stain Jacobian once again, and I stain both of these, um, just the front. I don't believe I did the back. Uh, you're not going to see the back, so I wasn't too worried about it, but I did do the sides and the front, and I don't know if I mentioned, but I did make two of these. Then you took my hand and said, let's leave now. I take my lanterns and these had little hangers at the top with screws so I just took those screws and those hangers out because we're going to be gluing these together when I glue them together I did not want them to stick or like come apart at the top if you know what I mean because that hanger is in the way so that's why I took them off but once I did that then I just take my favorite brush my chip brush if I remember I will link these chip brushes down below um, I get them from plaid online I used to get them from Walmart and they just sold out when all the craziness started in the world so I haven't seen them there at all but I do just focus on the edges just to bring those details out I really really liked the way that the edges looked but because it was white 
it kind of tones it down a little bit and you guys already know if you've been around I love my dry brushing anyway so no surprise here but once I did that, then I do just glue them together. And I did forget to mention that I did leave one of the hangers on each of the lanterns so that we have something to hang it from. Next, I take my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush. Once again, you guys will see a lot of this here. So uh, don't be surprised if you see it over and over. I just love the look that it gives. But I did dry brush all the way around both of our back hangers if that's what you want to call it but um, I thought that I had something to hang these from something different and I didn't so I did just take my pegboard hooks and I glued them down with some E6000 and some hot glue I then painted them black because they were silver and then that was it for these. I did just put a little bit of floral at the bottom. I placed the candle back in that it came from and look how high end these are you guys. They were literally one of my favorites and one of your guys favorites as well. So moving on to our next project are these little birdhouses. Um, that's why you see the lanterns in this in that first clip because um, I did do these in the same video but I just painted the bottom part of the birdhouses white. I then took a popsicle stick and I just measured how big I wanted the I was making like shingles and then I just cut them all down. Now you guys probably think that this was tedious but I did just take a stack and use my little mini miter saw and I just cut 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 all the way down a bunch at a time so it really was no big deal at all. Next, I just take my little shingle pieces, I use some Aileen's Tacky Glue, and I just glued them down. Once I had all my little shingle pieces down, you guys, I loved the way that this turned out. Sometimes when I'm doing a project, I'm like, oh my god, I don't know how this is going to turn out. But I was so pleasantly surprised with this. It just gives it that oomph that it needed just to dress it up and make it look high end. So I would pick these up at a store. I don't know about you, but I sure would because they just look so cool. But um, anyway, I wanted it to look a little bit different. So I did just take my stain, uh, Jacobian once again, and I just stained my roof of both of my birdhouses. Next, I take three candles, uh, glass candlesticks from Dollar Tree. Now, you can spray paint these or paint them. It's totally up to you. I didn't have any matte black, and I wanted it to be matte, so that's why I used my Waverly chalk paint, but I did just give all three of those two good coats. Now, in between coats, you want to let it dry really, really good or once you go back in to paint it, you're just going to pull that paint right off of it because it's glass. So either use a blow dryer if you're impatient like me. You guys, I'm so impatient. I'm just like, I just want to get it done. But um, yeah, if you're impatient like me, use your blow dryer in between coats. Um, I then just take a small brush and some white Ravely chalk paint. And I wish I would have just dry brushed um, randomly instead of focusing on each and every single indentation or 
you know, raised part, whatever you want to call it, design. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Whatever you guys want to call it, whatever you want to do. Anyway, <laughs> next I take my chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and I once again dry brush all the way around these birdhouses because you guys look at the way this looks when you dry brush. I mean some people don't like it but I just personally I just have to have it and Many of you guys say the same thing, but I do occasionally get comments that say, I don't like dry brushing, so it's really your preference. However you want to do it, it's totally up to you. Next, I just take, once again, my E6000 and some hot glue. I glue two of them together, and then for the other one... Um, Actually, I thought I made one higher and one lower, but I did just do both the same size. So I did only use two and I just glued them down and look how cute these are, you guys. Perfect for summer decor. Moving on to this windmill project, I take a windmill from Dollar Tree. These were in their garden section and I start by taking the tag off as well as separating the windmill from the welcome sign at the bottom. To do that, you just want to take the middle piece, you want to cut that off with some wire cutters and then the windmill just slides right off. Now I wanted this middle piece to go back on the windmill so once again I cut the other piece of metal that was on it and then I kind of bent the excess that I couldn't cut off down into that circle and then I just took some hot glue and glued that back on and then I went outside and sprained, I, yeah I sprained it, I spray painted it with <laughs> some of my silver hammered spray paint. Next I take some Jenga blocks and I use my Aileen's Tacky Glue to glue them all together and this is going to make our base. And I did do two rows of ten. I did my first row and then I used a ruler to make sure that it was straight and then I just glued my other 10 right to that. Sorry you guys, it is not Christmas anymore. It's now the 26th at 1.20 in the morning. I'm exhausted you guys, but I really wanted to get this video out to you since it was Christmas today and my normal video didn't come out. But I just wanted to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas. I know I'm late. Better late than never. I wanted to post on my community tab today. But it was just a totally crazy day. So I'm sorry about that. But I did just want to say that here. And if you don't celebrate Christmas. Happy Holidays. And um, I really appreciate each and every one of you. So once I had my base done. Then I just took some uh, regular dowel rods and I take some hot glue I glue them down into like an upside down V and then I glue at the top just to make sure that they stay together next I take some wooden skewers that I got from Dollar Tree and I just measure them out to make the X's at the bottom of a windmill Once I had all my pieces cut, then I just go ahead and glue them all down. I start with the three pieces in the middle, and then I move on to the X pieces. Now, at first I did just cut one of the X pieces, I cut the other, and then tried to glue it down on top of each other. That did not work, so I just measured it out. I then cut it in half wherever the X meets and then I just glued the first part down and then the second part down if that makes sense but I just glued one side of the X and then the other side sometimes when I'm thinking about us before we got lost and we parted back to back we would carry on and we 
Next, I brought my windmill inside and then I take my elephant Waverly chalk paint as well as my white Waverly chalk paint and a natural sponge. I get these sponges in the craft section at Walmart. They are by Folk Art and they come five in a pack and they are the perfect sponge to do uh, the galvanized metal technique, but I just dip my sponge in the elephant, I dab off the excess, and then I go in or I go over the entire surface with the elephant. And then once I do the elephant, just kind of here, there, and everywhere. This is personal preference, so just eye it. Um, it's totally up to you, however much or little you like to do and then once I did the elephant then I do go in with the white I do the I do do the white much less just because the elephant tones it down and then the white just makes it look like galvanized metal so you don't want to do as much white as you do the gray Next, I take my antique wax and I just paint the bottom of this. I didn't feel like pulling the stain the stain out this day, so I did just kind of use the antique wax as stain. It dries really, really quickly, and I wanted it to dry quick so that I could finish this project. But um, I did do the bottom portion as well as the part with the X's. Next, I just take a brush and that same antique wax and I just kind of go around my windmill because this kind of gives the illusion of rust. Now, lately I've been using the cinnamon technique, which I think would have looked really, really cool on here. So you can either use Mod Podge, put it wherever you think rust would look cool and then sprinkle some cinnamon on there or you could also just use this antique wax and then sprinkle the cinnamon on that as well so it's just up to you or if you don't want to use cinnamon because it can be messy then just take either some brown or this antique wax and you can make it look like rust very easily so last but not least, I just take my windmill piece and some hot glue and I go ahead and I just glue that down to the top. Now, you guys, I got this idea because I have a windmill just like this and it was pretty expensive. I knew that I could make it for less. So I made this for about $3 and the one that I have, I believe was about 15 or 30 dollars and that's just outrageous so you can definitely always make stuff for much cheaper that is what i love about diying that is what i love about diying from dollar tree projects especially i know you guys love it as well and i just love the way that this turned out it's in my bedroom right now and it has been since i redid my bedroom Okay, so now we're going to get into some fall DIYs. So I start by taking this larger wooden pumpkin as well as that smaller wooden pumpkin and I paint the smaller one with some white Waverly chalk paint and then I take the larger one, I lay it down on my buffalo check scrapbook paper and I just trace out that entire pumpkin and then I cut it out. Once I cut it out then I glue it on with my school glue stick. I love these things you guys. It's just much easier than Mod Podge. You don't have to worry about bubbling and all that and it really sticks really really nicely.
saw the city passing by my window. Was in the crowd, but I felt so once I did that, then obviously you saw that I printed off Fall Sweet Fall. I transferred it on with some graphite paper, and then I went over it with a black paint pen. Next, once again, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I take my chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint, and I just go around the edges of this smaller white pumpkin. Once I did that, then I just took my jute, I glue to the back of this pumpkin, and then I just wrap it all the way around that stem. Once I get to the end, then I do glue it to the top. Looked at my phone like every other second, my future was blurry and numb made a simple black and white buffalo check bow and then I glued that to the top of the smaller pumpkin and then for the larger pumpkin I made a jute bow and I glued that to the top of that one and then I just glued the larger pumpkin right to the back of the smaller pumpkin where that base is that's going to help it stand up and you guys, how stinking cute is this fall project? I know that fall is over, but I like to make all year round decor during the year. And like if I see something or if I think of anything, I just make it and I just store it away in bins until next year. So moving on to the next project, I take these two snowmen signs, take the tags off and the stickers, and then once again, I just glue down these large popsicle sticks to keep them together. Next, I fill in the holes as well as the middle edge with some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and then I measure out the frame with my wooden dowels and these are square dowels. I believe they're 3 8 inch and then I use my mini miter saw to cut them down, sand down the edges and then I actually did something a little bit different this time. I took a little bit of water in the bottom of a cup and then I took some antique wax as well as some black acrylic paint and I mixed that up to make a stain. Once I mixed that all up then I just used it as a stain and I painted my square dowels for the frame. Next, I just sand down all that excess spackling and then I go ahead and I paint this with some white Waverly chalk paint. Now, I did not give it a th very thick coat. I like the way that it looks when you don't give it a thick coat and you let some of that wood shine through. Um, so that way, at the end, you don't have to really distress it or... Um, sand it down so it kind of just looks like weathered wood. I then took this truck from Dollar Tree and it had pumpkins on it but I wanted this to be 3D so I did just take my utility knife. I scored where those pumpkins meet the truck and then I just very gently pulled them off. I set those aside and I always save stuff like that because I did end up using it in a different project so definitely always save stuff like that. Next I just paint the entire truck black and then once I paint it I go in with my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just go right around those edges to once again give it some dimension and make it pop off your sign. Now you can color your truck or paint your truck however you like but I'm really into those black whites grays that tone down uh, 
green and I don't know I just think it's very farmhouse and rustic and it's just my style so as I always tell everybody I just give you guys the ideas you can take my ideas and do with them what you want um, I love to see all your recreations you send me and how you guys do different colors and just do it to suit your decor. It makes my entire day and I really love you guys for it. So anyway, um, yeah, like I said, I just dried brush all the way around the edges and I did mean around the hubcaps and um, all that kind of stuff. So once I dry brushed our truck, I just take these pumpkins that were on picks from Dollar Tree. I chose the sizes that I wanted. So I used a teeny tiny one, a medium size, and a larger one. And I just used my utility knife and I cut those in half. We jumped off the subway lead. Hands rubbed off the cold around me. I heard you say that everything is alright. But how did you know how I felt? You saw right through me that day. I was lost in space. Next, I take my Moss Waverly chalk paint and I kind of just laid the pumpkins out on top of the truck to see where I wanted that where I wanted them. That way I knew which colors I wanted them because I didn't want like too many colors bunched up in one spot. So, I just kind of eyeballed it and painted the ones that I wanted with the moss and then I also painted the others with my cashew waverly chalk paint. The two middle ones were already that cashew color so for those I just kind of highlighted the um, indentations in them with the green and then for the moss pumpkins I just highlighted the indentations with the cashew color so basically all I did was just um, swap the colors on each Next, I glue down my truck exactly where I wanted it. I laid out these uh, wooden letters from Dollar Tree that say pumpkin patch to kind of get a gauge where I wanted them. I did make a mark under each of the letters once I had it how I wanted it. That way, when I went to glue these back down, I knew exactly where they were going to go. And then, last but not least, I painted them black. Once I had them painted black, then I just glued them down, like I said, wherever I had the little tiny marks. You're not going to be able to see it just because I did it so lightly that you wouldn't see it once this was all put together. So, um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Next, I printed this off. I had this in my stash. Anything that I print off, I always save because I can cut it up and use it in different projects. So I already had this, but it says apple cider, hay rides, and hot cocoa. So I transferred that on with my Arteza graphite paper and then went over that with my black paint pen. Next, I just glue my pumpkins down where I wanted them. Like I said before, I kind of mixed it up. That way, um, there wasn't so many colors in one spot. And I also do want to mention, I don't, I don't know where that clip is, but I did paint the stems with the Waverly Antique Wax. Now we just glue the frame down. As I always say, I start on one side and work my way down. That way you can 
um, fit your frame together really nicely. I do just glue those down with some hot glue. And then last but not least, I just glue down a sawtooth hanger. You can um, screw these on if you would like, but the signs that I make are usually pretty light. If they're heavier, I will screw the sawtooth hanger, but if they're very light, then hot glue will hold them just fine and then that was it for that one once again another gorgeous high-end project using dollar tree item so for our next project i had these yardsticks from home depot if i had wooden rollers from dollar tree that's what i would have used but i didn't have any so i just mark where i want them cut i cut them in half and then i cut them on an angle so you need two pieces of each side for each cat is what we're going to be making for halloween or fall i had them up all fall and they are so stinking cute but anyway I also cut three pieces for the bottom so that they can stand up and then I gave them all a really good coat of black or ink Waverly chalk paint. Next I went on my computer and I printed out a picture of a cat or you could type in cat eyes. Just because you guys, if you've been around, you know I'm OCD. I knew that I could draw these, but they wouldn't be exactly the same on each side. Or even, I felt like they wouldn't resemble cat eyes. So, just to be safe, I printed it off. I took some chalk. I scratched it on the back of these eyes. And then that way, when you put it on the black to transfer it on, then you can see it. If you try to use graphite paper, you're not going to be able to see it just because it's black on black. But once I had those traced on each side, then I did go in with my white and I painted over them. I you turn everything around. I will always remember it. How you got me off the battleground. Next, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I go in with my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around these cats. Now, I thought that it gave it a really cool effect because some cats or kittens have that white hair on the black and I just thought that it looked really, really cool. So, um, I w actually was not going to dry brush these, but... You guys know it wouldn't be Melissa fashion if I did not. So next I just take some wood glue on each side and then some hot glue right down the middle to hold these guys together and I did that for all three. Once I had them glued together then I do glue them down to the base. I then make a triple jute bow for all three of them. So I made three triple jute bows and I just glue them right underneath the eyes of these cats to finish them off. Look how cute these are, you guys. If I saw these in a store, I would definitely pick them up because they are perfect for fall or Halloween. They just give those spooky vibes, and I love them. So if you guys are not following me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is allthingscrafty2. I share a lot of personal stuff over there as well as let you guys know when my videos go live. So the... um link to my instagram is in the description box if you guys want to check me out over there moving on to probably my viewers most favorite project there is a ton but this one i still get comments about to this day and i just 
I'm in love with it myself. So we start with these two trucks from Dollar Tree. I once again cut those pumpkins off by just scoring them from the back and then popping them right off. I then take one of these wooden crates from Dollar Tree and I glue that down to the first one. Once I have the first one glued down, then I go ahead and I glue down the second one. But before that, I take some popsicle sticks and I just measure. That way, once we're done um, gluing the other part on, then I have a perfect piece that is going to fit perfectly in between those trucks. Once I had that piece done, then I measured it and I cut all the other pieces. Next, I take my popsicle sticks, I put some hot glue on the edges, and then we're just going to be filling in that front part of the truck. That way it doesn't look so strange and this truck looks finished. So once I had all my pieces glued down, I just followed the shape of the truck with the popsicle sticks. I took this Starbond um, wood filler or I mean, you can use it on anything really, but just to fill in those gaps, I did go in with that. I do have a link to Starbond in the description box below because you guys, I was totally impressed with this. Once I used it, I couldn't believe how good it really did fill those gaps in. I then took it outside and spray painted it with my hammered spray paint in silver. And then once that dried, I took my natural sponge, some Elephant Waverly chalk paint, and I just dab all around this truck to my liking. Like I said before, this is personal preference. You kind of just dab and then eyeball it and see if you like it or not. So it's really up to you how much or how little you do that. And then once again, I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and do the exact same thing. But I do go a little bit lighter on the white than I do the elephant. And if you go a little heavy handed, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. It's easily fixed. You just go back in with your elephant and kind of tone that white down. you dry do you know i'm looking and i can't help but smile do you know how much i love you you put my favorite I take my Ink Waverly chalk paint and a small brush and I just paint the wheels. I leave the hubcaps, um, that galvanized metal. I thought that it gave it a really cool effect. And then I flip it to the front and I paint two windows for the windshield. Um, I don't know. I just liked the look of that better than one whole window. So you can do one whole window, you can do two like I did, it's totally up to you. But once I did the windows, then I went in with a, I actually used a um, much smaller brush to do the headlights as well as a grill. Once I had all that done, then I did go in with my antique wax and I just kind of highlighted spots and um, around the fenders, spots that I thought that a truck would be rusty um, just to finish this off. I am going to let this play so that you guys can see how I do it just in case you want to make your own galvanized truck. I put my feet up and we just sing along and I can't help but feel just loving this moment can we stay here forever i'm loving this moment can we stay here together if i could stop the time don't you know that i would cause i'm just loving this moment can we stay here forever forever 
put your favorite song on just to wake you up when i dance around i can't help but feeling just loving this moment can we stay here forever i'm loving this moment can we stay here together if i could stop the time don't you know Okay, you guys, how cool is this truck? I can't even believe that I did it myself. I love it so much. It is still up on my little mantle still to this day, and I did just swap out the florals for each season. So this was fall. I had some greenery and some pumpkins, and for Christmas, I just threw some Christmas greenery in there. I cannot believe I did this with Dollar Tree trucks and this one will definitely go down in one of my top favorites that I've ever done for a very long time. So moving on to our next project. So because I did a truck that was galvanized, it would only be right if I did a different style truck. You guys love these so I always want to bring you guys um, content that you like and I know that by the comments and the views and stuff like that so basically I did the exact same thing for the last truck that um, I'm gonna do for this truck so I just took those trees off I, because I didn't have any more of the pumpkin ones which I'm gonna be honest I really like those better because they're bigger and it's just a different style truck and I just like the look of those better but you use what you have right so once I took off the tag in the tree I glued down the um, wooden crate now for this one I did do the crate much lower into the truck rather than the crate sitting higher and then I measured the popsicle sticks glued them down after I cut them and then I gave this a really good coat of white Waverly chalk paint Forever, forever I'm loving this moment Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment So for this one, rather than using a small paintbrush, I did use my Arteza black paint pen and a white paint pen. I love these paint pens because they give you extra tips when they get worn down and there's different styles of tips. So they're really, really nice quality. But like I said, rather than using a small brush, I used my paint pen for the headlights and the grill. And then for the wheels, um, I did paint those black and then I used my white paint pen to make a hubcap. Right now I'm standing in the corner I see you from across the room Next, I took this brush from Dollar Tree. I was curious to see if it would be easier or if I liked it um, to use for dry brushing and it was okay. It got in like the window part much easier, but 
Of course, I went back to my trusty chip brush and used it because there's just nothing like it, you guys. I've tried so many different things, so many different brushes to get this effect, and literally nothing does it like this mini chip brush does. So, um, I definitely keep many of those on hand at one time. Next, I take these Canadian stems. I believe I got these at Hobby Lobby, and I measure for a wreath. I cut it, and then I just glue the edge with some hot glue, and then I hold that together to make a wreath. I did make three of these, and then I took this pit berry, these red pit berries from Dollar Tree, and I measured again. I did the exact same thing, glued the edge, made a little mini wreath and then glued that down to the green wreath here, but I know you see me too everybody singing oh everybody singing oh I don't know what it is about you it must be in the way you move I then take my wreaths and I glue them down where I want them. So I did one on the front, one on the back, and one on the side. And then I made three little tiny mini red bows. They're so cute, you guys. And I put them on all of the wreaths at the top. Moving on to our next project, I laid out about 10 large popsicle sticks and then I marked the shape of a tree. I then cut those down and I did that for two of them, one larger one and one smaller one. I had them all cut down then I went and I took some hot glue on a small square dowel rod and I glued all those pieces down if you guys hear little noises my little munchkin is right here in my arms and uh, she was crying and just wanted me so she's just sitting here chilling with me but um, I did also take a wooden star that I got from Dollar Tree in a pack of assorted and I uh, cut one of those down so that way it would not look funny on the smaller tree and then I stained them both with yep you guessed it my favorite stain Jacobian you got me going oh, you got me going Next, I took my Arteza glitter jars. I picked out the colors that I liked. I didn't want it to be um, like really bright gold or just plain copper. So I did mix two colors and I used the copper and the gold just to give a nice contrast between the two colors. So I start by taking my Mod Podge and I coat these stars really really good with the Mod Podge and then I sprinkle some of the gold and some of the copper on them both. Problems. I thought we could fix 
I shake off the excess glitter, I save that in its own container because the colors are mixed, and then I take this square wooden piece from Dollar Tree, I give it a really nice coat of white Waverly chalk paint, and then once that is dry, then I use my chip brush, and I kind of go heavy-handed on some of these tree pieces lighter on others I wanted it to look like weather wood and I wanted the pieces to look different so once I did that to both my trees then I take my chip brush and I dry brush around the base for these trees with my antique wax there's nothing left to do but to say goodbye and try to move on I'll get over you, only wish that I, I then glued both stars to the top of our trees. And then, last but not least, I just put a really good dab of hot glue on the bottom of each of the dowel rods. And then I glued them down to the square piece with one offsetting the other. And then that was it for this project, you guys. This is another one that I am totally in love with. It's really funny because all the ones that I really love are usually the ones that you guys leave in the comments that you love so like I said before let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite Okay guys, now this next one is super duper easy. I start with one of these Dollar Tree signs. I had already had it painted white from a previous project. So um, you just wanna paint your sign white. And then I took my Chalk Couture vintage truck. I paint it black and then I take this Buffalo check part and I paint it red. Now. I should have did that backwards, so if you get these transfers, then you want to do the buffalo check part first, and then do your truck over top of that, but once I had that done, then I go ahead and I transfer on the Christmas tree. Once I did the tree, then it also has another layer to it, and I painted that white. Now, these were back in the days where I used my chalk paint to do all this, and I wish that I would have listened to the person who sold these to me. She told me, do not use chalk paint. You can use it but your transfers just won't last as long as if you use the paste. So just be aware that if you ever purchase these and you use chalk paint, you're just not gonna get as many uses out of your transfers as you would with the chalk paste. So once I had the truck and the tree done, then I do transfer on tree farm and established one, or established 1950. I then take my chip brush and my ink Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush around to finish this one off. Okay guys, moving on. This is actually my most recent uh project in my most recent video but I take these beware signs I cut the tags off and then I take a ruler and my knife at first but my ruler was just sliding around so I just freehanded and I scored the middle of all three of the signs I then glue them together with my large popsicle sticks and for this one I did glue it right in the seams rather than up and down if that makes sense. For the edge piece a large popsicle stick didn't quite fit so I did just have to cut the end ones off right at the end of the popsicle stick and then I gave it a coat of white Waverly chalk paint leaving some of that brown showing through to make it look distressed without distressing it. I then uh, measure out the pieces for our frame. I fill in the holes with my 
lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. And then once that lightweight spackling is drying, you really only have to let that sit for five to 10 minutes before you can move on. But um, while that is setting up, then I do just take my little mini miter saw. You guys, I love this thing so much. You guys know I rave about it all the time because it's just so easy to use it right there on your desk. It doesn't make a huge mess like a bigger saw does. And it's just a really good tool to have in your craft stash to make stuff like this and not hurt your wrists or your back sometimes when I'm trying to use a, a hand saw it's just so unbearable on my wrist I have mentioned before since I had kids my wrists just are not what they used to be but once I had them cut I sanded down the edges and I stained them with once again Jacobian and then I set those aside to dry I had this lamb's ear garland from Walmart I believe I got it at for um, pretty cheap and I got it a while ago but I just kind of measure the size um, that I need because we're going to make little mini wreaths and then I cut those down. The, this is not wired so they were really easy just to cut with scissors and then um, I took a bead of hot glue on the edges of these and I glued those together. Originally I only made two and then I figured out that I didn't like the way that it looked with two. So if you do recreate this project then you can start off making three. I then went on my computer. I printed off Mary. Um, I did have to tape it together because this is a really big sign and I didn't want the wording to be too small. So if you ever want to do wording and it's not fitting, just do it as big as you want. Let it run off and then you can always cut it down and tape them together. And then I transferred it on with my Arteza graphite paper. I then use my red paint pen from Arteza as well. I go over that wording and then once I did my wording, I wanted to give it a little bit of shadow and some contrast. So I did go in with my gold um, acrylic paint and I just gave it a little bit of shadowing on the ends. Back when I met you, we were like fireworks. Thought nothing could break us, but oh how we got burned. Look at us now, we scream, we fight, and no one knows the reason. We're both getting out of line. Next, I glued the frame down with some hot glue. I'll get over you, only wish that I knew how to go on. I then take this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. <laughs> like I said in this video, you guys, I'm so OCD that I literally counted the strands to cut this down perfectly in half, which is 11. And then I strung it through our little lamb's ear wreaths. And then at the top, I glued it. And then down the bottom, um, kind of where the ribbon meets the wreath, I glued that as well. That way um, it wasn't like a big space in between it and that it would stay together. You definitely want to use a silicone spatula or like I used the silicone um, finger protectors because the burlap has holes in it. It will definitely burn you if you just use your fingers. So for the first one I started by gluing it to the back and then I glued the front but I I quickly found out that it's much easier to put your wreath exactly where you want it and then you glue the front and then you can flip it around and glue the back. Now I did do 
each um, wreath on either side a little bit higher and then the wreath in the middle I did that one a little bit lower again just to give it some contrast so it didn't look so uniform once I did that then I cut some berries off of this pick from Dollar Tree and I just glued those rammed uh, uh, randomly around the wreath so that it looked nice and Christmassy and I love this so much so I still felt that it was missing a little something so I just made three simple bows with some red and white buffalo check ribbon that I got from Walmart with a piece of gold ribbon in there and then I just glued those down to the top of the wreath and then look how gorgeous this sign is you guys I love it so so much this I have up on my mantle so um, I'm sad that it's not Christmas anymore and all this stuff will be coming down until next year but this is definitely a sign that I will put out year after year Hey friends, for this next project, I start with this little tinsel tree from Dollar Tree and I just cut down the side of it and then I take all that tinsel off of there. Now, I thought that it was just wrapped around, but it's kind of like stuck on those little pieces that you see that are kind of raised. So I just worked the tinsel off those pieces. Once I had all the tinsel removed, then I take this little baby blanket also from Dollar Tree it is just the gray buffalo check but I just um, covered it with this that way if you could see through the greenery then you couldn't just see right through it so really you could use anything you have on hand but I just kind of measure and then cut I run a bead of hot glue down it I stick the tree to that and then I measure it that way and then once I cut it I just kind of place some hot glue on that plastic piece and then I wrap the blanket around. I also tuck the bottom around, around the bottom and kind of underneath so that way it stays taut and um, I did cut excess so that I could be able to do that. Next, I take, I take these fern branches from Dollar Tree. I was completely shocked at these, you guys. They're gorgeous, and they're only a dollar a pick, and they're really, really full. Like I said before, sometimes Dollar Tree's picks are not full at all. That's why I usually shop Walmart for my picks, but these were gorgeous. So um, I knew that I wanted to do something with them. I just didn't know what, and then I come up with this idea. So once I um, cut these off the pick, then I just start by placing them all the way around this um, frame, this Christmas tree frame, and then once I had them all placed and there were no um, like spaces that you could see through, then I just take a piece of jute and I wrap it around the top. Because these are so full and because I kind of had to layer them at the top, they wanted to kind of stick out so that jute is just going to keep them from coming off of there. Then took this buffalo check tree skirt from Dollar Tree and I cut that white edge off of it. I then just measure around the top of this tree, which is going to be our gnome. And I had this piece of fabric. I believe I got it at Walmart or Dollar Tree. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I got it from Walmart. And I just measure um, a triangle and then I cut that out. So once I had that cut out, you want to have two pieces all together. Um, I just took some hot glue. I ran it up the sides of this. This is going to be our little hat, and it's so cute. I, I love this fabric so much, but um, you do not want to glue the bottom part. So just the sides, and then once your sides are finished, then I flipped this up. I also made a jute 
um, tassel by wrapping jute around my fingers a bunch of times. I then cut another piece and wrapped it around the top of this and then I just cut the ends off as well as cut the ends so that way they're all even. Here I am, like I said, I flipped it up. I then trimmed those pieces down. I then glued that piece up just so that way you have a finished edge and it's not gonna fray or anything. And then once I did that, I turned my hat right side out and then took that white piece that we cut off of the tree skirt and I just glued that all the way around our hat. I then fitted it on our gnome and I did realize it was a little bit too big so in the back of the gnome I just um, kind of pinched it and then glued it a little bit tighter and pulled the hat to the side the way that I wanted it. We were holding on to something that we both know could and work so we should try to say goodbye. then take a piece of jute and string it through our tassel. I tie that to the end of our little gnome and then I I was going to stop here after I put his nose on but I thought that it was just missing a little something. So like I said um, I glued the nose down. I did use a 20 millimeter bead and then here I was like okay he needs something so I wanted to show you guys this bow trick I get asked all the time and I do usually just link it in the cards but I'm going to show you how to make a quick simple and easy bow that is perfect every single time so I did slow this clip down for you basically I start by my uh, two fingers I lay the ribbon over the two fingers. Once I do that, then I take the right side, I bring it around my fingers and then to the front. In between my fingers at the bottom, I slide that piece through it. Once I slide that piece through that piece, then I bring it up and over in between my fingers and then on the left side where your pointer is pointer is where that piece is you slide the end of that through that piece now I know that probably sounds complicated that is why I slowed this down as best as I could if you need to go back and watch it over and over you can just rewind a few seconds and if you need it even slower than this all you have to do is click those three dots in the right hand corner and then a drop down menu will appear and you can slow this video down even further if you like. I just wanted to show you guys this little trick. It's so quick and easy. I use it every single time. My mom taught me this. It did take me a few times to get it. But once I had it, it, it's like second nature doing it. Now you can't do it with bigger um, ribbon that are bigger than your fingers. It is kind of hard to do it with wired ribbon, but I do it no problem because I'm just so used to it. So just practice, practice makes perfect, and you will have a perfect bow every time. But once I have my bow done, then I clip the ends and then I just glue that to our little tassel on our gnome. And look how cute this is, you guys. I am so in love with him. He's going to stay up all winter. So, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Okay guys, moving on, this was another fan favorite. So I started with that Mary sign from Dollar Tree and I just paint the entire thing white. I then got this basket weaving reed from Amazon. It is linked down below and you guys can make your own tobacco baskets. 
I got this idea from our Sally Chan. She didn't do this exact same one. She actually did like a different style, but I did want to give credit where credit is due that this is not my idea, but I did make my own variant of it and I did get the idea from her. So Anyway, I start by cutting a bunch of pieces and then literally I just weave them through. So the first one you're going to go under, over, under, over, and then the second one you'll go over, under, over, under. And you just do that with however big of a size that you want, making sure that you leave excess on the ends to be able to put the piece around it that's going to make your basket stand up. So after I have all my pieces weaved through and glued down, I did want to mention that as I weave them, I did glue them down. I then made it two longer pieces for the cross pieces and I also hot glued them down. You can also use like Aileen's tacky glue. It's just not going to dry as quick and you will have to clamp it and I just feel like hot glue is much easier, but personal preference, whatever you guys want to do is totally up to you. But anyway, for the end piece, this was the first basket that I made, so it did come out a little bit wonky. The second basket I made was much, much better, but as you go around the edges, in order to get your basket to stand up, you want to pull especially the corners as much as possible. So if you want your basket to be really, really curved on the edges, then you would make your corners really, really, really curved, if that makes sense. You can see what I'm doing here. And as I go, I clamp them just to make sure that they stay in place and um, they stay uniform. So once I had that done, then I just clipped my edges off. I like to leave excess. Some people do it to where um, that last piece goes right up until, um, like, you don't have any excess to cut off, but I don't like that. I feel like it's just a safe zone to have extra just in case you need it. But like I said, you can do it however you see fit. But once I cut those other pieces off, then I did take another piece all the way around the edge just to finish that off and make it a bit stronger. Next, I take my favorite stain and I stain this. I just do the front for video purposes. Um, I still haven't stained the back. I said that I would, but I haven't yet because your girl is busy, you guys. I can't even see straight. I'm so busy. I do the best I can. But eventually, I hope to be able to stain the back. So if you do this and you have the time, I definitely would stain both sides. Once I had it stained, I go back to our little Mary sign and I take my antique wax and a chip brush and I dry brush all the way around the edges to make this word stand out. Next, I just made a simple bow out of red and black buffalo check ribbon. I glued that to the top of the deer and then I took these two uh, berry picks that I had from Dollar Tree and I actually did not really like them there so I then had these two berry picks from Walmart they were like 97 cents a piece really cheap and they look really high end so no harm no foul but I did just take some green floral wire from Dollar Tree and I just wrapped those around with the berries pointing in different directions. I then just took the excess wire that was uh, that I just used to wrap around. I just left like a couple inches and then I wrapped it around one of those pieces of the reed. That way it can stay in place. Now for the Mary sign, I really did not want to glue it down because I wanted to be able to change this out. That's also why I didn't glue down the berries. So um, I wanted to change it out for each season. I just used some command strips for the Mary sign and I just glued that down with command strips. 
Here I'm just showing you how to make another simple bow. Um, this is a little bit bigger red and black buffalo check than I used for the Mary sign, but I just fold it over on each other three times. I cut it and then I take another piece that's longer than that piece. I cut that as well. I then pinch it in the middle, tie it to make a bow, and then take another little piece and wrap it around the middle so that way you can't see the jute. And then I just pull that down, cut those excess pieces off. Actually, I lied. I saved the excess pieces so that I could tie it on this sign. Usually I would glue it, but like I said, I wanted to be able to change this out. So I just tied it on there. And then last but not least, I took my um, scissors and I cut dovetails. And that was it for this one. Actually, matter of fact... <laughs> You guys, it's been a little while since I did this project. So, matter of fact, last but not least, once again, I take my chip brush and my White Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around the basket just to make it look old and weathered and look how gorgeous this tobacco basket is. Moving on to our next project, I take four beware signs from Dollar Tree. I start by cutting those edges off because I wanted these to be straight on the edge. And then once I did that, I also cut it on an angle. So I started to cut the edges. Actually, I cut the edges off of one side of these. I then cut them on an angle on the other side. So for the two side pieces, they're going to be a little bit smaller. And then the two middle pieces are going to be a little bit taller. So I do just use that first one as a template, but I mark it higher up the board if that makes sense. We're going to be making a barn, so you want the two side pieces to be shorter. I then just flip them around, glue them down with some large popsicle sticks to keep them together, and then I do the exact same thing for the side pieces. Once I give this a good coat of my Crimson Waverly chalk paint, then I take some popsicle sticks, large popsicle sticks. I cut the end off and then I hold it up to the edge of the barn and then I cut that or I mark it and then cut those pieces as well. And I do that for both sides as well as the top. Next, I just used skinny sticks to create a door, and I used skinny sticks for the side pieces and the top and the bottom for the barn door. I wanted it to be pretty big and a double door, so um, for the cross pieces, it, the skinny sticks just were not long enough. So I did just take a large popsicle stick. I used my utility knife. First, I cut the edges off and then I just scored it four times. So pretty much what I did was I cut a large popsicle stick in half and then in half again to make quarters for the cross pieces. I then glued those down with some hot glue and then we're going to work on our windows. So for the windows I did just use skinny sticks. For the bottom piece I made it a little bit longer than the top piece so that way it kind of looked it that way it kind of looked like a windowsill and then I measured out the side and top pieces and then glued those together as well as the window pieces of it in the middle and I glued those down as well.
Let's go outside. The snow is falling down, and every child is having so much fun. A snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. We're holding hands. Once I had all those glued together, then I just take some white Waverly chalk paint and I paint all of my pieces, the windows, the doors, as well as the top of the barn and the side pieces. Then I just take my ruler and I mark every two inches because what we're going to do is make marks so that way this looks like wood on the barn and I go over that with my black paint pen. While we stand and watch a choir perform and all the Christmas songs that we love. Yeah, all the Christmas songs that we love. And then while we're gone. Next, I just take my little finger sander and I sand down those black lines just so that way they don't look too harsh and too bright. That way it looks like weathered wood. And then I go in with my chip brush and my ink really chalk paint once again and I dry brush all the way around my barn as well as in between the middle or whatever you want to call it. I dry brush around the entire thing. I go pretty heavy in the middle of the barn just because, like I said, I wanted it to look weathered. But as usual, once again, it's totally your preference if you want to do it more or um, not as much as me or not at all. It's totally up to you. But I then just dry brush all the white pieces as well. And I printed off this wreath from Google. I just typed in greenery wreath. I then took my Arteza graphite paper and transferred that on there. And then I went over this wreath with my Arteza green um, acrylic paint pen. Look how vibrant this is, you guys. I honestly was nervous when I did this because I wasn't sure how that green was going to look up against the red. But I was so pleasantly surprised. And then I did print off home for the holidays. I did the home in a different font than I did for the holidays. But I just transferred that on once again with my graphite paper. And then I went over those with my white paint pen. So for the windows, I wanted it to be a little bit of a different background. So I did just take some cardstock from Dollar Tree. It came in a pack of three, I believe. I measured out for the back of the windows and then I just took some hot glue and I glued that down. A subscriber of mine had said that probably yellow would look cool for lights in the barn. So you can do whatever color you like. You, if you like it without it, you can leave it off, but I thought that it just gave it a little bit of dimension to um, put behind those windows. So you can let me know in the comments down below if you would use yellow, black, whatever color you would use, or if you would just leave it plain. Next, I just glue all my pieces down, the two windows as well as the doors. And then last but not least, I take my chip brush and my ink Waverly chalk paint once again and I just dry brush around the doors and the windows again to make it all look cohesive and weathered. I love this one you guys. I get asked all the time still about this one. Um, I get asked if I want to sell it and I really don't. This is another one I have up in my home so you guys, I have a hard time letting go. I might do like a auction for a bunch of stuff. So we'll see in the near future if I can get the time to do that. So the ones that really want are wanting to get their hands on certain projects, maybe they can. Moving on to another project. You guys, I love these beware signs. They're just so versatile. I can use them for so many different things just because they're much longer than the other signs. So on my channel, you will see me use these a lot just because when I DIY, I like to do much bigger projects. 
So per usual, I just take the tags off and then I, once again, I just use my ruler and my knife and I cut those edges off just um, one side of each sign. I then just take my finger sander and I sand down those edges so that they are straight and flat and then I flip them over and I glue them where the flat side is so that way we have a much longer sign. All I want is to spend this day with you Let me give you a Christmas a moment will fill with love and joy a beautiful kissing on a mistletoe's baby with you i don't need any presents as long as i spend this day with you mm -mm, so beautiful kissing on a mistletoe's baby with you next i just use wood putty to fill in those gaps you guys don't do this i look like an idiot doing this one of my subscribers was like Dumb, Melissa. It doesn't work very good because that's just made for like filling holes in. So <laughs> don't be a dumb dumb like me and try to fill in a large gap like this with wood putty. Just use your um, lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree or um, any kind of spackling that you have it doesn't really matter what it is but I mean I did finally get this to work and then I let it dry and sanded it down but you know um, I did feel like an idiot when my subscriber told me that so anyway once I sanded it down and vacuumed up the dust then I just give it a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint once again, I left some of that brown showing through so that we don't have to distress it um, in the middle of the sign. And then I printed off B Mary and I wanted my letters pretty large so only one letter would fit on each page. But once I had everything cut out, then I did just transfer those um, letters right onto my board with my Arteza graphite paper. Then once I had my images or my letters transferred on, then I did just go over those with my Arteza black paint pen. I'm making plans, what we're gonna do? I feel so blessed that I can be with you. Cause God knows that I've been longing for you. I just wanna hold you close. You know the stars are shining just for you. Let's take a walk. We can follow the moon light till we reach a place we could stay. Maybe kiss a bit and dream away. And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas a moment we'll fill with love and joy. Mm -hmm. Next, I take this iron on fabric that I got from Walmart. I believe I got this last year, but I did see some out this year. So definitely snag you up some. These are really, really nice. Um, obviously I'm not going to iron these on, but you can use them for anything really. But anyway, I just try to flatten that piece out because they are folded. I then fold that in half and then I use my fabric pen to draw out a Christmas tree with the points on the edges. And then for the next one, I used the green and I did the exact same thing and I cut out a straight sided Christmas tree, if that makes sense. I don't need any presents as long as I spend this day. Next, I just take some large popsicle sticks, I cut the ends off, and then I kind of hold it up to my trees to see how long I want these trunks, and then I just cut those off. Once I have those cut off and I have them the size that I want, then I do paint the trunks with some antique wax. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And in a 
why we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas a moment we'll fill with love and joy. Now to glue these down, you can certainly use an iron if you want, but I didn't want to pull it out, heat it up, and all that fun stuff. So I took my Disappearing Purple glue stick. I love to use these. They just give you a nice smooth finish. And I glued both of the trees on the bottom of my sign. I did glue the uh, green one down, and then I glued the red one kind of... Um, not on top of it, but on the side of it, overlapping it just a little bit to give it a little bit of contrast. And I do love the way that it turned out. But if you don't want them overlapping like mine does, then you can just cut your trees a little bit smaller. Once I had both of my trees placed down, then I just take a little bit of hot glue. I glue my little trunks down. And then, once again, of course, I take my chip brush and some Ink Waverly chalk paint, and I just dry brush all the way around, all the way around the edges of our sign. I then just made two simple small bows out of jute using the same technique that I showed you earlier in the video and then I just took a little bit of hot glue and I glued those to the top of the trees. Once I put the bows on then I flip my sign over and I use some hot glue just to glue down a sawtooth hanger. And I did also want to mention, I don't know if you guys can see that pack of hangers, but it comes with a ton, all different sizes and different styles of picture hangers. And those are linked down in my Amazon favorites. They're really affordable and you get a lot of them in there. So you get a bang for your buck. And then that was it for that Be Merry sign. I love these longer signs just because I have so many of the other size. So it's nice to have longer signs that can go on your door or really anywhere you like to put it. You can also put it outside if you spray it with some clear coat. Moving on, once again, I take these Ho 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 signs from Dollar Tree. These obviously are in the Christmas collection and they are already straight on the sides. So that Santa part where the Ho 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 was, um, it's just like a piece of paper. So it ripped off when I ripped the Ho 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 part off. So I just finished ripping it off of both of them just so that way you have a cleaner looking back and then I glue them together with my large popsicle sticks. I take my yard sticks from Home Depot and I just take and I measured out every one inch I believe maybe it was every two inches um, but I just used my yard stick to be kind of like a guide for me. I wanted to score this so that it looked like wood and that's just an easy way to make your pieces look like wood rather than take and waste stir sticks or you know wooden 
um, rulers from Dollar Tree to create wood, you can just make the illusion of wood by scoring it. So I scored down the entire, um, both of these boards and then I cut my pieces for the frame. I then just glued them down with some hot glue. And then I also cut a middle piece for this so that it looks like a door. So for this next part, I brought you guys a little bit closer just so that way you could see exactly what I did. I already did the one pieces, but I took large popsicle sticks. I laid them down in the top of this and then I just um, marked where the corners were and then I cut those off and I also cut the other end so that way it would be straight and it would lay together nicely. Once I had all eight of my pieces cut for the top and the bottom then I do just glue those down with some hot glue. that I can come home to Yes, I am on my way So I definitely had a brain fart here. I started to paint it and then I realized that you could see the indentations from where they put the ruler on the yardsticks. So I did stop painting and I just took my finger sander and I sanded it down as best as I could. Once I was done, you could still kind of see it, but I once I painted it and I distressed it, you couldn't see the numbers at all. So after that, then I just painted the entire thing white. And then I realized that I didn't want it to be white. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, you guys. I just kind of grabbed the white and went on with it. Um, so definitely skip that step. And then I painted over it with my crimson Waverly chalk paint. Next, I take the white once again on my chip brush and I dry brush all the way around the edges and I do do the outside and the inside edges as well as the cross pieces. To make those lines stand out just a bit more, I did take my paint pen and I just kind of lightly went over those um, marks that I made to make it look like wood um, just to bring those lines out like I said. Next, I had these letters from Walmart. I believe they were like a dollar and some change a piece. Don't quote me on that. I do know they were at least a dollar, so fairly inexpensive, and they're pretty good size, so I really don't mind paying a couple extra cents or whatever to get letters from Walmart. I know that they're much cheaper there than, say, Michael's or um, Hobby Lobby, so... Uh, yeah, I don't really mind paying that. If you don't want to use letters, just go on your computer and you can print some off for free. I painted those white and then distressed them with some black. And then once I distressed them, 
then I take them to my project and I just lay out the letters where I want them. So once I have them laid out, then I do take my Canadian stems that I got from Hobby Lobby. I don't know why I love these things, you guys. I just love that they're wired and you can make little mini wreaths with them. I just this season have fallen in love with them so so much and have made so many different little wreaths with them but anyway I twisted together a few pieces to make a wreath so that it was a nice size and then I doubled that up I also took some gold pit berries from Dollar Tree and I made another wreath to glue on top of the green one to give it some decor and then I took these little mini pine cones from Dollar Tree and I glued those around our little wreath as well. Once I glued down the pine cones then I made a bow and I glued that down to the top of the wreath as well as I glued the letters down. Then I take this handle that I got from Home Depot for I believe like 97 cents. I screwed that down and then I went in with my ink Waverly chalk paint and I just gave that some more distressing. I felt that it needed something else and I couldn't quite put my finger on what I felt that it needed. So once I dry brushed this on, it just really brought this entire piece together and I am so ecstatic with the way it looks. Let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite per usual as I always ask you guys. I'm just so curious to know what everybody's favorite is and their style. It's just so fun to chat with you guys about that in the comments. So um, of course I forgot to say that I uh, I actually screwed this one down because this piece is really, really heavy and sturdy. So I did screw down a sawtooth hanger on the back so that way I had something to hang it from. Yes, every time the snow is falling down. So for the next project, I took this gift box from Dollar Tree and I also took some large stir sticks. And I get my stir sticks at either Lowe's or Home Depot. They come in a pack of three for 97 cents, which is a bargain. A three pack at Walmart, I believe, is about $3.97. So I definitely make sure to always pick up some of these while I'm there. I then just cut my um, frame pieces on a 45 degree angle and I do measure these pieces out first and then cut them with my little um, miter box saw. I then just stain them with some Kona from Walmart and I use a little dabber to do this. I do like to use these dabbers to stain if I'm doing something flat like these stir sticks. It just gives it a really, really nice application. And then I glue the frame down to the box with some hot glue. Once I had that frame glued down, then once again, of course, you guys already know what I'm going to say. Yep, you guessed it. We're going to dry brush. So I just distress around the edges with some white Waverly chalk paint. And then to finish this project off, I just took the bottom of that box and I glued it to the back of the sign just so that way the back looked finished and it kind of just makes it a little bit more sturdy. And then that was it for that project. You guys, this is probably my quickest project in this video. I believe it only took me just a few minutes to um, put it together and probably maybe a half an hour to um, get the pieces ready. But it was literally so quick, easy, and the look is absolutely amazing. We gather around the fireplace and no one cares about guests.
Okay, moving on to our next project. If you guys are still with me, you guys are the true OGs. Leave a Christmas tree in the comments down below. So I take this little sign from Dollar Tree. This is actually a square sign that I got from the Christmas collection. I take the tags off and the hanger and I um, use some lightweight spackling in those holes. So once that lightweight spackling dries, then I take my square dowels and I measure it out, cut it and make a frame once again. And then I stain my pieces with, of course, Jacobian. While that is drying, I take three of these signs from Dollar Tree and I use my staple pull to take the hangers off and I just sand down where those staples were in this little sign. Now, originally I glued together all three, but I did not need to do that. I did just do, um, or I did just need two of them, so I did end up taking off one of them. But here I am, once again, trying to fill these cracks with this wood putty. Well, it's painful to watch, you guys, because it's, it was just a mess. It would not work, like I said before, and I don't know what in the world I was thinking. But I attempted to fill those cracks with some wood putty, but I was successful in filling the holes where the staples were. And then once it dried, I sanded it down and gave it a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I also did the same exact thing while my paintbrush was out and I gave this other sign a distressed coat of white chalk paint as well. Next, I take my I'm Dreaming of a Farmhouse Christmas transfer from Chalk Couture. I will leave all the um, transfers that I can. There are links in the description box as well as some information on how to save on Chalk Couture or become a team member if you guys are interested in. Um, I will leave all that information in the description box, but I cut my transfer apart and then I fuzz my um, farmhouse Christmas and then I stick it on my sign. Now because I want this wording to be different colors, I do just take some painter's tape and I tape off the parts that I didn't want the color to be in the other word if that makes sense. Once I have it taped off, then I take my red, I um, dip my squeegee into my chalk paste, put it on the sign, and then I just squeegee it off. It's so satisfying to do. It's so satisfying to see that image come up once you're done and you pull your transfer off. I, I don't know, you guys. I just love it so, so much. I cannot get enough of it. But I do do the I'm Dreaming of in red. I do Farmhouse in black. And then I take the tape off and I do Christmas in red once again. Once I do that, then I take off the side pieces. And um, we're right next to I'm Dreaming of. And I do those black as well. For the top of this, I did mix the transfers um, this come from Club Couture. That's also an option. Um, you can get a transfer and pay singles sent to your house every month. And when you're a designer, then uh, you automatically get these anyway. So I did just cut up a different transfer and I used that on this sign. You can mix colors. Um, 
it's just so easy and so high-end looking so once I had my image transferred on then I go ahead and I glue down the frame and then that was it for that one you guys that's another thing I love about chalk couture you really don't have to do much just use a few different colors and then you have a gorgeous high-end looking sign moving on to the other one that we had just painted this is another transfer I do know that this one is currently out of stock I know I'm sorry so many of you guys tried to get this when I did this project and it went out of stock I'm so so sorry hopefully it'll come back next year because this is definitely one of my favorites but once again I just transferred my image on there and then this one is layered so where you see the tree the snowflake and the house um, you just transfer the background and then you transfer those top pieces and you can use whatever color suits your fancy <laughs> and then surprise surprise you distress the edges you guys if i have to say use your chip brush and um, dry brush the edges one more time Ugh. but as you guys probably know in the next one and the next one I'm sure there is most definitely dry brushing because I just love it so much I can't help it you guys I just cannot help it in Christmas times we'll be chilling and having a good good time Okay, moving on to the next one. I take this tag from Dollar Tree. I take the hanger off of it as well as the sticker off the back. I then take my quilters ruler and right where those edges are, I make a mark because we're going to make a birdhouse. And birdhouses are typically skinnier at the bottom than they are on the top sides. So I did just make marks and I cut those down as well as I made marks at the top for the peak on the birdhouse and then I used my knife to score it and cut those pieces off. I then took this long decor sign from Dollar Tree. I took the edge off of it and then marked it where it would go on the bottom of our little birdhouse. I opened it up all the way and then used my knife once again to cut that edge off. Once I cut that edge off, then I take that piece that I took off the end again and I glue, the, glue it back together and I glue the other side back together as well. I then just take my finger sander and I sand off the excess glue and then I take just a little piece of a large popsicle stick and I glue that to the back where the hole is because this was a much bigger hole than the smaller or the other signs um, I didn't want the spackling to go through it and then you would still be able to see that there was a hole there so that popsicle stick is just going to make sure that your spackling stays in there nicely I um, sanded off the excess glue once again and then I filled that hole with my lightweight spackling. Once my spackling was dry then I gave the bottom piece and the birdhouse a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. And I can promise Santa's coming to visit No he wouldn't miss this in Christmas times I then just take two small stir sticks and my little mini miter box 
and I put those on an angle and cut the edges on a 45 and then cut them down to size for the peak of the birdhouse. Once I cut them down, then I just clean up my workspace with my favorite tool, my Dyson. That is also linked in my Amazon favorites. I use this thing for everything. You guys, confession, I actually have three Dysons. I have a serious problem. Somebody please come help. <laughs> Anyway, I stained the roof pieces and then I take my quilters, roller, and a pencil and I just make two lines on either side and then I paint those red. I went on my computer and printed off the letters J and Y, transferred them on my project, and then I went over them with my black paint pen. Shooting me with words, but I will let them bruise. Next, I measure out a piece of nautical rope for the wreath in the middle of the O. Or for the O in the middle of the letters, I glued that together and then glued that down to our um, little project. And then I just take some uh, greenery from Walmart and I glue that all the way around the nautical rope to make a little mini wreath. Once I had the greenery glued down, then I once again took some red pit berries from Dollar Tree and I glued that or cut it down to size, um, glued that together like a wreath once again, and then glued that down to the greenery. I also just made a simple bow and glued that to the top of the wreath. And then I took my uh, chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and I distress the edges once again. Once I have the edges distressed, then I go ahead and I glue down the roof pieces. Prior to gluing down the roof pieces, I just took some antique wax and I went pretty heavy handed with the dry brushing on the bottom piece so that way it looked like a piece of weathered wood and then I um, glued the roof pieces on like I said before. Now because this is such a thin sign I didn't want it to fall over when I glued it down so I did just take three Jenga blocks I glued them down to the bottom piece that way I had something that was stable and I would have something to glue the sign to so that it doesn't tip over and then I took my sign and I glued it to that um, Actually, I did two rows of the jingle blocks, so all together I did five, three on the bottom, two on the top, and then I glued that down. And look how gorgeous this is, you guys. I love that bottom piece. You would never know that it was just a cheap piece of decor from Dollar Tree, and um, I'm just so in love with the way that these turned out. 
Okay, you guys, we are at the end. That is it for this video. Happy 2020. Goodbye, 2020. We would never want to see you ever, ever again. I hope 2021 is much better than this year. Thank you guys so, so much for everything you have done and brought to my life. I love each and every one of you. I am grateful for each and every one of you every single day of my life. If nobody has told you today, you are beautiful, you are worthy, and I love you with all my heart and soul. Thank you guys so much for sticking around this entire video. If you made it this far, you guys are everything to me. And I just cannot tell you enough how much I love this community. I hope you guys enjoyed today's projects and enjoyed today's video. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love it if you would become part of the family. And I would love it if you would consider clicking that subscribe button and then tap the bell and all and all to be notified every single time I upload. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. This was a lot of work to put together and do the voiceover, but I do it for you guys because I love you guys so much. So those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help you to YouTube to notice me just a bit more. So until next time, my friends, I will see you in 2021. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and I hope you have a Happy New Year and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.